All right, all right, all right. We got ourselves a big one. It's the grand finals, the EU regionals. Clem in the bottom right side, fighting his way through from the lower bracket up against Cyril in the top left. Cyril has not dropped a series all tournament long. And he is once again opening up with that 15 hatchery, 15 pool. He's been favoring, especially against Clem, as it does allow his queens to get out and defend that Reaper very early. Uh, Cyril has been fantastic. He's looking great. And as a result, he does get rewarded with a 1-0 advantage in the best of seven. He needs to win three games to win. Clem needs to win four. Some people say, I don't like that. That's dumb. It's unfair. It's such a big advantage. I think it is perfectly fine. I always felt that... If you're going to have a double elimination system, you know, uh, you want to have a big reward for not losing any series. Um, and uh, otherwise, you're better off just doing single elimination. So the fact is, Clem's lost a series in this tournament. Serral has not. A 1-0 map advantage, I think, is perfectly fair. Now, I have somehow avoided spoiling myself for this. I, uh, My lovely wife has put fake replays in a folder for me to fill it out. Assuming this doesn't go the distance, the full six potential games. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know if she had to put any fake ones in or not. I'm hoping for a close banger of a series. They had uh, some very good series recently where Cyril used a mixture of different strategies. Um, there was, of course, the game where he tried to do a kind of Roach Queen push off two base and he messed it up really badly. He didn't have enough gas and the build just did not line up and a couple of Cyclones and a Banshee picked off innumerable units they picked off so many roaches and ravages the push never even really got to the terran side of the map it was very sad to watch a nice little micro just hides the drone in the extractor reaper doesn't really find too much now he's gonna put the third command center in a very easy to scout location i think putting it over here is a little bit better a little bit harder for them to scout now you can tell clem's worried about the overlord sneaking in behind the back but he's gonna come in from the right side which is not what he expected Drone's going to move out to take a third. Even though it was a 15 hatch, 15 pool, he is going link speed into third hatchery. And this Overlord, already seeing the lack of second gas, he knows it's a third command center without even revealing the Overlord scout. That is awesome. So you might think, oh, he didn't see the third command center. Why didn't he go in? What's he doing? The thing is, if there's no second gas, it always is a, quite a fast third. So Serral knows that. It's also why I often point out, and I, I mentioned this in a previous cast, uh, maybe two weeks ago I mentioned this in a cast, so it's kind of funny to mention this twice in such a, a short period. Uh, you always want to take this gas first, because that's the one that's uh, much easier for them to scout. This one back here, much harder for them to sneak an overlord all the way in the back of your base and see what's going on there, especially if your marine is going to be watching that left access point, which is what he was doing. Reaper dancing around, we've got creeps spreading out right now. It's going to be a two barrack, so it's a third CC into two one one. We expect the factory to swap off after Hellions three and four. Let the barracks get on there and start pumping marines. The factory will build a new reactor so that he can uh, put that one on a starport. Yeah, so there'll be a reactor going up there. Extra queens are building right now for Cyril. He's on four queens going to six. What I like about this build is he builds more Zerg rings to defend the Hellions. He actually ends up a little lighter on the queen count than with a more normal 16 hatchery build. He's only just started this seventh queen, whereas when he plays 16 hatch, he has seven queens by 420. In this game, he's only just got his sixth and seventh queen halfway built at 420. Doesn't sound that big, but it does make a difference in terms of he might be vulnerable to like a hellbat timing or something like that with this. I don't really see there being a big window since he's still pretty decent on that production, but you can definitely see maybe some potential. He spouts in the back with the Overlord, does Serral. Knows about the second barracks upgrading stim. He knows there'll be double medevac marine pressure. And he's going to go double evolution chamber. Quick upgrades to deal with this. Very heavy on the queens and the zergs. He should also be pulling these overlords back, leaving them out there. Those are fodder for incoming medevac marine pressure. So you want to pull back onto creep and not giving him any free kills. Serral's not really fixing that just yet. See if that bites him in the butt. Double engineering bay in the back for Clem. Now we've noticed that Clem always forgets his 2-2 and his concussive shells. Last time they played, he forgot about that a lot. Way too many times. Um, if he's being aggressive, it feels like he almost always forgets them. Now if he can be highly aggressive and remember those upgrades, I definitely feel like his momentum, his aggression is one of the scariest in the game. This overlord is a little bit exposed, but the Metamax haven't spotted it just yet. 
Doesn't quite have enough vision to see that. Hellion's taking some hits by the Queens. Lair is now on the way. We should see a Bailing Nest in the near future. I like that Cyril's making it hard for him to even unload those Marines. Nine Queens, 24 Zerglings, 61 Drones. A super solid setup for Cyril. Fourth Hatchery is almost finished as well. Now he's got to be wary. Hellions can dive in the left side. He'll have a little bit of warning, but not a massive amount. Queens push back the Marines. They stim and retreat. Fourth and fifth barracks starts up. 1-1 upgrades are almost halfway done. Keep your eyes out. If his armory starts in the next uh, about 20-30 seconds from now, that'd be perfect. Getting a nice little semi-depot wall here around that third mineral line. Always very helpful. And the Bane Liness timing for Serral. Absolutely perfect as well. So we can start Baneling speed right on time. Zerglings go for the YOLO surround onto the Hellions. Serral sensed, hey, these Marines aren't willing to fight my Queens. Let's send all the Zerglings to kill his Hellions. And he's also going to run in. Nice transfusers on the Queen. He should be able to replenish this creep very quickly. He's still got an active tumor on the right side. Clem's got more Marines moving down the left. Second factory is on the way there for Clem. It's interesting that he almost always goes second factory before Armory. But Armory is still decently timed this time around. And a fifth Gas Geyser. So it is just going to be... Wait, wait, wait. He's building Widow Mines right now. He built two siege tanks into Widow Mines. Interesting. It looks like Clem wants to play Widow Mines, but oh, not watching. Loses a few Marines. Takes the bite out of this tr pressure on the left side of the map. There are two tanks in a defensive stance, so I don't think Cyril's going to find much damage with the aggression, but he can click on the command center. Oh, doesn't quite get in. I would have loved to see him just click the command center and then run away after killing it. Not a good trade for Cyril, guys. He gets a siege tank, but he's lost a lot of Zergens to do it. He's going to lose a lot more. Yeah, that's pretty damn good for Clem. Fourth command center is still building, of course. 2-2 two -two upgrades do need to start now. The armory's done. 2-2 two is already 45 seconds complete for Cyril. Come on, Clem. You've got to start those upgrades, mate. Units lost tab 50% in favor of Clem right now. It's very good, but this is early days. These are small skirmishes. He needs to carry that through to the bigger stage of the game. 2-2 two -two and Drilling Claws on the way for Clem as well. He's going to push this left side. The Queens have split here for Serral. I love that he split these Queens. Great transfusers. Still loses a Queen regardless. Clem's Focus Fire, very good. Serral needed to pull that Queen back there as well. Would have uh, kind of bugged out the AI, and Clem would have needed to change orders. Three more barracks going down for Clem as well. Got the reactor pumping out Widow Mines. Serral, no sign of a hive. The Infestation Pit is finished. He's ready to start that up whenever he chooses. Watch out for the Widow Mine. Oh, not a bad Widow Mine hit. Cleans up a bunch of Zerglings. But Cyril cleans the area, respreads Creep, and I love that he's got his army kind of spread all over the map now. He's very well prepared to deal with just about anything that hits him. Got a few extra Queens in the main and the natural, pumping those Injects into those hatcheries. Here comes the real army, though. Cyril's going to need to gather a lot more forces on the left, just leave a few units on the right. A couple Banelings try to roll forward. That's a great way of slowing down a Widow Mine advance, but the single Siege Tank in there already has 21 kills. Adds a lot of range. Means poking in with small numbers of Banelings will get punished. Bio Mine on the right as well. That's three Widow Mines. Clem known for shoving a bit far forward, almost overly aggressive with these sorts of pushes. Widow Mines are now spread out a little bit. Good spreadies from him. And oh, great Widow Mine hit 16 kills. Looks like the Widow Mines are being cleaned up on the left. Serral getting pushed back, though. It feels like these fights, even though he's up two upgrades, it kind of feels like Clem's getting the better end of them. We'll see how the tail end of the fight goes. Those Medivacs are out of range to pick up. Uh-oh. Clem focuses down some Banelings, saves a few of them. Units Lost Tab will tell us how this went. That is massively in Clem's favor. Two to one ratio right now. I talk about our Terran needs a 25 to 30% efficiency advantage as standard Versurg. If you're at double their efficiency, 100%, that is massive. Still dancing around on both sides. The Hive has finally started, but Serral doesn't have Hydras. He doesn't have Infestors. I gotta wonder what Serral's doing here. If you don't have Hydras, you don't have a fast Hive for Vipers or Ultras, you're just playing Ling Bane versus Queen. He's gonna out-trade you with Biomine. He will out-trade you in the long run. Serral needs to get something to deal with this. He's trying to do it with Ling Bane Micro. If anyone can do it, Serral can. I gotta tell you, as a normal Zerg player out there, the thought of defending Clem's bio mine with just Ling Bane is basically the stuff that I wake I wake up in the middle of the night dreaming about that in a cold sweat. That is the sort of stuff I would not wish upon my worst enemies. This is setting yourself up for failure unless you are a god tier Zerg. Luckily for Serral, he redefines what it means to be a solid Zerg player. 
Marauders being mixed in, still no concussive shells, no 3-3 started either. Clem, he's almost maxed out, but still forgetting those upgrades. Five workers just went down. I can only imagine there was a widow mine drop somewhere. Maybe that one just ran in on the ground, actually. Yeah, it looks like a widow mine just walked into the base and killed five drones. Queens will take care of it. Liberator's coming in on the worst possible angle. At the same time, Marines do get picked up. Some good widow mines smearing those units. Widow mine there, not going to get a big shot. Of oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is a perfect circle. Oh, man, a perfect circle of red blood from those Zerg units. Absolutely foul widow mine hits here for Clem, who's maintaining a two to one unit loss ratio. Serral has got 3-3 on the way. He's making Adrenal. He's got two Vipers. I mean, this will slow down the Widow Mines, the, the Metavax a little bit, but I always feel like Lingbane Viper is one of the worst styles against Bio Mine when you're behind uh, because the Vipers just don't do enough against this. Oh, man, big Widow Mine smears. Here we go. Nice pickups. Great pickups for Clem. Clem's all over it. Clem's feeling it. He's in the pocket now. He can feel it. He's, he's flowing. He feels exactly what he needs to do in every moment. And you can sense now that he is vibing and having a good time. His fifth base is up behind it. Look at these spread. He's on the far left and on the right side. Ling's trying to get in to do damage. On the right, though, there's Liberators and Bio. If those queens go down, that Liberator will have no answer. Oh, no. There's no Bane Lings here. The Lings on the counterattack being dealt with slowly by Marine Marauder. The Marines gunning these units down. He even runs forward and takes out a Viper. Clutch transfuse from Serral. Saves the other Viper right there. Clem all over it, though, and that was a spectacular trade. He dives in the left at the same time. Maybe a little over-eager. He is straying a bit from the 2-1 to one efficiency we saw earlier. As these fights end up getting messier, it kind of favors the Ling Bane player a little bit. Trying to build more Queens, more Lings, more Banes, and more Vipers, though. I feel like having something like a Fungal to really punish these moves is where Serral starts to shut down the Bio Mine. Without that, without Ultras, I don't know if he can get back into this. It's going to be so tough because the Terran has more economy. It's five base first, five base, but Terran's got the money. The upgrade advantage is not there for either side. 3-3 coming in at a similar time for both players. Ling's try to counterattack, and they will take out a Widowmine, but not without getting smeared on the ground yet again. It seems like Destiny manifest, manifests for this Zerg army it is to become a bloody smear, to become a fine bloody mist. That is your job. That is your goal, and there is no avoiding it. Still a 2 to 3 units lost ratio. That's a pretty massive advantage. Serral has lost 50% more army than Clem in this game. We've got to look at the units killed count. There's only 5 SCVs versus 13 drones. It's almost all army versus army. A couple of SCVs in the midst. They, they, those SCVs are attacking Banelings! Talk about brave boys. Clem notices, sends them back. It must have been some sort of misclick. Great pickup on the Marines. Leaves the Marauders and the Widow Mines to take the Baneling hits. Spectacular micro. Evacuates this mineral line as well. Serral cannot get damage done on these bases. And he is running out of steam. These trades are terrible, fam. 3-3 three, three kicks in for Terran. It's about to kick in for Zerg. The Ling Bane Viper. It's great when you've got momentum and you're ahead. But when you're on the back foot, I don't see the Vipers allowing you to make a comeback. Serral doesn't see it either. He's running out of steam there, and he has to tap out. A great play for Clem in game one. Really nice commanding play. And uh, even at the end of the game, still no concussive shells. Someone write it on a post-it note. Clem's dad. Make Marauder concussive shells. Um, but uh, even without it, it doesn't matter, man. He's just too good. All right, a rough game there for Serral in the top right side. Uh, definitely would have liked to see him tech to hive a little bit faster or squeeze a few infestors out. Maybe go for the Hydras there. Wouldn't have been a bad play. So I'd Scarlet say going Hydras is a great way to shut down Widow Mine play. Apparently that's a, a common thought amongst Zergs, but Serral was like, no, no, no. Clem's a freak. Let's go Ling Bane, Viper, and try to get up to that hive and those nice upgrades and not get out upgraded for once, but can see with Clem's new kind of momentum focused style I think it's more important than ever to get something that can really punish him for clumping up his bio and stimming on creep and that's where fungal comes in that's where hydras can start helping out with the range damage firepower there's a few different things you can do it's, it's always hard to say from the sidelines in the back seat you know sitting here going Monday Monday morning quarterbacking I believe is the American term um backseat gaming now, this is Radu Set Station. The last map would have been Clem's pick. His first map pick, his best map. This one's going to be Serral's best map pick. Going to be rallying onto that gas. So, no no really fast, like, third hatchery by the looks of it. I love 
gasless third hatchery plays on this map. I think they're fantastic. Last time they played, he did that versus Clem. And uh, he shut down the Hellion Lib aggression with just queens and uh, eventually going Zerglings, played muters. The only problem for several is he plays Mutalist so much on this map. Is that going to become a weakness for him? Normally, if your opponent expects Mutalisks, you play Roach Ravager, and you can kill them with like a Roach Ravager timing if they're committing too much to Widow Mines and Marines. Thors, that sort of stuff. The problem is on this map, I don't think you're killing anyone with a Roach timing attack on this map, unless you really hide what you're up to, which is very unlikely. Now, he's trying to mine out those minerals on that back base. And we'll be ready to take that third. SCV sees what he's doing there. Now, interestingly, the Reaper is still coming across the map. I feel like the Reaper opening is so useless on this map, and yet Clem still does it. I expect people to do a lot more Command Center first, multiple Marine openings. But a lot of the Terrans just still doing Reaper on this map, even though it doesn't achieve much at all. Especially against the 15-15. Now, this was not a 15-15. Third hatchery goes down. Link speed has been delayed. It starts up only now. And of course, no second gas. Quick third command center for Clem. Serral's Overlord trying to sneak around the left. But there's a Marine in position to stop that. As long as he stays disciplined and keeps it there. Serral brings his second queen down. Throws the creep tumor nice and far back to make sure it gets up. With the ramp, I think he could have thrown it a bit further forward. But he knows that Clem's a bit of an annoying player to play against. So he just wants to get in there as quick as possible. Second barracks yet again. Clem is saying, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's get the medevac marine pressure going from as early as early as possible. Which maps would you veto a Zerg? Usually small rushing maps. Uh, I feel like Oceanborn is high on the list. Hecate is, is kind of high on the list. But um, there's probably something I'm forgetting that's even higher on the list that I'm not thinking of right now. Maybe... Site Delta might actually be a map where, because it's got so many good, great tank positions and ledges, you might actually want to get rid of that. I haven't seen Serral play Site Delta in the last few weeks in ZVT, so maybe he's vet vetoing that as his number one priority. Alien Reaper coming in. We've got a starport there, a reactor. Stim is on the way now. This looks pretty straight up. Serral, does he realize what's going on? He sees the barracks is on the reactor. So I think he can basically infer. Hey, you've only built two aliens. You've already got the barracks on the reactor. It's probably a similar build to the last one. I don't think there's anything wrong with Serral's build. The double upgrades were fantastic. Maybe a few more counterattacks mixed in with the, the heavy upgrade advantage on the Zerglings could have been nice. But he's going to go Lair Baneling Nest this time. Oh, Queens are out of position. Nice surround. Gets a Reaper, gets rid of a Hellion. Now the Hellion does have to back off. Oh, he's going Roach Warren. As I said, Serral's been playing a ton of Mutalisks on this map. Often you want to swap in a Roach Ravager. Oh, but I, I, I don't know if this is the map for it. <laughs> I, I really... I'm like... <laughs> I'm kind of proud of my an 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 analytical prediction, but I'm also like, I don't think this is a great map for it, Serral. I don't know, man. I think what he'll do is he'll get a handful of roaches, maybe roach speed, but maybe just five, six ravages. And then he'll basically go for um, transitioning back into Lingbane and Hive. Now, this is a single Evo chamber as well. What is this? Early carapace, I would guess. 64 drones against 49 Clem. For some reason, picked up and then he just dropped there. What's he doing, guys? Guys, what's Clem doing? Why is Clem dropping his units at home right now? Did he see the Zerglings coming and he thought he was getting all in? Oh, I think Clem's paranoid. I think he thinks there might be a big attack for Serral. I, I, I missed that. I think maybe when he was moving out, he saw Zerglings flooding in and he thought, oh god, I'm getting all in. But now he sees a fourth base, Clem with a misread. Clem with a big misread. Sorry, guys, for that snap back there. A little bit jagged. I was just on Clem's vision. And uh, he's not pressuring. He's got to get out there and start doing something. The whole point of this build is to get out there and slow down the Zerg. He is not doing that right now. Infestation pets on the way, as well as a second evolution chamber. I feel like the early infestors, the disable, just as a great counter to Clem's micro. Now, Overseer comes in, sees exactly what he's up to. He's swapping to... Did he? Oh, he scanned and saw the Roach Warren guys. Okay. So he's swapping his factory to build tanks. Fourth and fifth barracks is up. I wouldn't mind an early fourth command center. It's so easy to defend your three bases on this map. 
Build a fourth on the high ground is not a bad idea. Yeah, 1-1 one, one melee carapace, Banely Nest, and the Hive on the way. I actually think with this build, getting out a few Infestors is almost non-negotiable. It's such an amazing move. Roaches will do very well with that. He's got 10 Roaches so far. Gonna be a little cautious. Only has 6 Queens. Clem has been very passive and afraid, though. He just cancelled an add-on. He's going to swap that over onto the existing reactor. Not a bad play. Second factory into armory. Clem's been very dedicated on getting that quick second factory. I like this. This is something I'm definitely going to add into my own three command center builds after watching him do this a lot recently. I feel like my second factory is a little bit more random than that. Drone goes down. Nice to on the fifth base, but this is not worth attacking into. A couple Marines go down. Good transfusers for Serral. Double drop on the left. It's going to find Spore Queen and units ready to deal with it. Ooh, Serral happy to get some damage on the medevac. Nice. I'm asked to back off with this pressure. He's really not finding any inroads. Hive is now up. Ultra Cavern already about to go down. Two Vipers, Adrenal Glands. Serral's rich. She's on 87 workers. Clem's only on 68. I'm not saying Clem's dead in the water or anything like that. He's got a pretty quick fourth base. It's already almost done at eight minutes. But Serral's growth has been astronomical. And I really feel that first two medevacs not coming across the map has given him a little bit too much room. Double drop in the bottom does have to emergency pick up. This drop's going to try and rotate. There are spores and queens around, not to mention those zerglings though, so Clem has to chill. Should be seeing extra barracks go down uh, in the near future, guys. A single barracks goes down, but he doesn't have enough money for more than that. Does need 300 minerals to build two more. There we go. Three barracks now on the way. Two, two upgrades on the way for both sides. Similarly timed. Units lost tab is slightly ahead for Clem, but no serious impact on the Zerg whatsoever. Now, as the Vipers are coming out, these drops dancing around the back could get very dangerous. Queen's going to do some damage. Army running forward on the front. Oh, we just lost a bunch of queens, guys. Two queens on the edge of creep to get taken out. A few spores on these edges would be nice as well. Vipers coming down here, wanting to start using the Parasitic Bombs. Clem's actually pushing. This army does not look that big, though. He's going to try and just siege across this gap, which is a very cute way of doing it, especially if they don't have many Ravages. He's going to try and put those tanks nice and far forward. Oh, this is a good setup for Clem. Serral may have to end up giving this base up. He just A moves, basically rolls over the front marines and then pulls back. Does not want to keep fighting around that terrain. If he wants to engage, he needs to flank around the left and come through this big open ramp. But look at that, guys. Vipers coming in, blinding clouds, or actually he just goes for the abduct. Not a bad move. A lot more marine marauder comes in. The bottom flank crumbles for Clem, but his reinforcement's quite scary. Serral's got to back off and make banelings. Serral needs more banelings right now. Uh-oh. He's got Ultras on the way. Kindness plating is not quite done. Plus two carapace is almost finished. Plus two attack going to finish at an almost identical timing for the Terran player. The Banelings connect with the Marines. But there is still a bunch of them there. The Roaches trying to hang on and they do force the pickup. Clem taking some heavy losses. Only ahead of 1,000 resources in the units lost against a 90 drone Zerg that has Ultra Viper out. That is frightening. Parasitic bombs landing. The Metamax with a very quick split. Good mind will take out a Roach there, but the Roach is going to start to clean that up. Plus three carapace has started for Zerg. Plus three weapons starting for Terran just a few seconds later. Fifth command center is building. Clem would like some momentum in this game. But keep in mind that the upgrades are all there. We've also got seven dropper lords going down the bottom of the map right now. I think Clem saw that. He's got a widow mine drop that flew right past it. Nice hot pick up here for Clem. Chasing all the way into this area. You're so, so far from home. Makes things super awkward. Widow Mine Drop will come in. One of those Widow Mines does get killed. The other ones will get decent hits off. Four drones do go down. He's going to drop one more Widow Mine in that fourth base. And it shouldn't get too much. Just going to damage a queen, potentially. Clem kept changing targets, hoping for the drones to come back. Was not able to get the money. Three Ultras and 16 Zerglings. Not a bad little drop. I think he's going to load a few more Zerglings in there. But Clem saw these Overlords coming. So he's got a bunch of Widow Mines, Bio, and a Liberator ready. Is it enough to handle it, though? If he had turrets on the edges, I would think so. And then Serral would be forced to drop here. Serral's going to wait for him to be distracted. Triple drop going north. Serral does not have that many Spore Crawlers himself. He also hasn't broken these rocks or these minerals, which you normally want to do at this stage of the game. Vipers are nearby, though. Parasitic Bomb. Watch out, mate. That Medivac will be toasted. 
The rest of the army's gonna pull back to the north. Drop coming in. Widowmine does land a hit. But not gonna stop anything from unloading. Second Widowmine will fire as well. But these units are out inside the base. A few of the Lings and the Ultras are just chilling. Not the smartest units. Seven SCVs do go down at the same time in the top. The army jumping on top. Those medevacs pick up and save themselves. He does burrow to save. Clem should scan. And he does, realizing, yep, that's a big chunker right there. You see that giant hole in the ground? Yeah, that ain't normal. Command center has to get lifted. Clem unable to take a fifth base right now. Rider set is a map that is very hard for Terran in the late game. He's going to play Bio Lid. A few ghosts are in the mix, but not that many just yet. Very hard to land snipes on ultras when there's banelings in your face. I'll, I'll give him that. Cyril's got the bank growing. Now, does Clem have the iron bank? He does not. He's only on three orbitals right now. Uh-oh. Well, the medevacs get shot down. That drop goes down. Units lost tab. Not too bad for Cyril. He's got the gold base up and mining as well. He's going to five infestors with Burrow. Adding all the different upgrades, even range upgrades starting to come in now as well. He has a Spire also. He, he lost one of his games the last time they played against Clem by not having Corruptors to deal with the Mass Liberator transition. Definitely needs to make sure he, he actually uses the Spire this time to build Corruptors once he sees this Lib Count grow. Spore Crawler kills a Liberator in the bottom right side, upper in the left Watchtower. Oh, Unburrow Fungal, but the Infestor just needs to run away. It goes down. It's a lot of Marines and Marauders. There's still a lot of Roaches in this army. Uh, roaches are what we refer to as uh, D-tier units, guys. Really, I mean, they're S-tier in the early mid-game, and they're, they're F-tier in the late game, so these Roaches are units that Serral should be throwing away right now, whether just by A-moving them, killing them himself, or running them around for a counter-attack, but he can't be leaving them in his army, because he's got 10 Roaches right now, and 2 Ravages, and that's 26 supply being wasted on units that don't do damage. Luckily, he's only on six queens. Nice scan for Clem. Keeps catching these burrowed infestors, but there's another one. Max on energy coming in from behind. Oh, no, 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 Clem, watch out! Great fungal in the rear with the fungally gear. I would have loved to see a fungal on the right or a second one on the left as well there. Kind of a missed opportunity. I don't think Cyril's used to having that much energy in the bank. He's got another flanking infester. Another flanking infester. He's going to turn. He's going to turn on it. You know he is. Oh, he lands a big juicy one. Chains it a little bit. Banelings in the middle. The ghosts, the marauders getting hammered. And that's the problem you run into is Cyril is a god of using those infestors in the late game. These marauders getting gunned down. Yes, there's a liberator denying mining in the bottom. Yes, Clem's sending a liberator up the top as well. He's trying to do anything he can to distract Cyril. Widow mines do get a few shots on the retreating roaches, but yeah, man, the roaches survive always in these battles, and they're not really the unit you want. So uh, I'm kind of surprised he doesn't just chuck them away, but it is what it is. Double liberator harass in the bottom. I'd like to see the liberators snaking their way around the right side. Advanced ballistics has been made, as well as ship weapons at level one. The medevac energy upgrade, plus 100% energy on the medevacs. 100% regen rate. Very big upgrade. Widow mine drop goes in on the right side. There is a liberator in the top at the same time. The Widow Mines aren't really getting any big kills. He gets a bunch of Zerglings, but that's not that amazing. This Liberator is getting shot by Spore Crawlers. The Liberator down here is still being a bit of a D-bag, but uh, only a matter of time until Serral deals with that. Up here in the top side, Liberator is still not sieging. This one is getting a few drones. Finally, some damage coming out. But this is prompting Serral to build a single Jellyfish, guys. One Corruptor. He needs more than that. The Liberator Medevac count, those are the big juicy units you want to take down. A full energy Infestor goes down. Great catch for Clem. Gonna re-siege, take out even more drones. This Corruptor is taking so long to deal with these Liberators, but oh! A Burrow Fungal comes in. Both Medevacs getting away with deep red hit points. Another Fungal lands, but it doesn't hit those two Medevacs that were both one Fungal from death. Nonetheless, a lot of Terran units going down. Widowmine's friendly firing, unable to land those big hits. There's not many units back at home either, but it is gonna be enough to stave off the Zerg for a moment. He has to go north, but all the bases are up here. This is a big problem. Up in the top, Liberator trying to find an opening. On the right side, Liberator finally going down to that single Corruptor. Banelings will roll in, take out the Planetary. I would have loved to see a few Banelings go after those SCVs. He's going to try and take out the far top left as well. Not a bad call, but of course, Clem's hot on his tail. Corruptor finally deals with the Liberator on that right side. There are still Widow Mines over here. The Ultra Bane does force the cancel on the Planetary in the top left. And this is all delaying Clem's income significantly. Look at the Structures tab. Clem only has four Orbitals. This is not a late game Terran. He does not have 7, 8, 9, 10 orbital command centers. He can't drop Mass Mule. Whereas Serral, his bank might not be that massive, but he's got tools, man. Two Infestors, three Vipers. 
keeps rebuilding his drones, keeps up massive amounts of mining. He's got a random baneling burrowed there. Almost a little pervert baneling. A few infestors always out there in the Terran territory as well. The Brit is trying to come forward right now. Nice pullback on the Zerglings. I think this is really wise. He realizes that Clem's whole army is commanding the top, so he's like, I'll just attack your natural. Your whole army is so far away. This is the problem with Terran on this map, is you just can't cover everything at once. And I think Clem's kind of realizing this might happen, but the Infestor even sees it. Infestors have such good vision while they're burrowed. He does unburrow Fungals on the Ghost there, gets a few of those units. Baneling's continuing to run forward. Vipers want a Parasitic Bomb. The Metavax gets a couple nice ones. Widow Mines are landing, though. Good pullback by Clem. His Micro is fantastic. Units lost tab, though, looking pretty good for Serral. Another Liberator comes in, and as annoying as they are, this Corrupt is going to Value Town. I think this might actually be the Liberator from earlier that ran away and then came back. Second Liberator kill finally coming in for that Corrupter. A few more spores on the bottom at least can limit the angles they can come in from. Triple drop going south right now. A Cyclone, a bunch of Marines and Marauders. Another Cyclone being built here. Clem keeps fat fingering the Cyclone key. That is absolutely a mistake and something he definitely would like to stop doing. Uh, he does have concussive shells this game, so shout out to Clem for that one. I'm not sure when he got that. He's going to go for Cloak. Still maxed out is Clem. Serral only has 5,000 resources in the bank. One good fight could take away Serral's advantage. It's all on how Serral picks Clem apart. You know, Clem has to cover a lot of ground in different far apart areas, and that's a big problem for him. Triple Drop ended up unloading behind the rocks down here. This army feels like it's cornering itself for no good reason, guys. This is not a good spot to be in as Clem right now. He sees there's an army there. He's only got a few units here. Oh, he catches the Infestor. Nicely done. Very well done. Widowmine drop in the bottom. He's going to be able to get off a couple of Widowmine shots. Nine drones, not too bad. Serral, though, he's got Infestors. Ooh, very nicely done. The MP does land on that other Infestor before it can do anything. Nice hot pickups for Clem. Clem taking the gold base is a, a terrible move. If he commits anything other than mules to this, it's a disaster. If you take this, Serral's going to swoop into the top left and deny these two bases, almost guaranteed. You can't defend this base and the top left at the same time. Not a big fan of this maneuver. I do feel it's going to give Serral a big window to run on in. Now, Serral has not made Great Aspire. I would love to see him open up that tech just in case he needs it later on. And for now, he needs more Corruptors. He doesn't really have them. The lid count is growing. He's going to roll in, deny these SCVs, deny these turrets. Topside, Widowmine's trying to run in there. The Roach count. There is still a few Roaches left. Looks like only one Roach left and four Ravages now. That Widowmine not quite firing. These Zerglings just running past it. This is such a weird map in the late game. I really feel like, as a Terran player, I personally would probably either play Mech or, like, uh, Ghost, Ghost Mech. Mega Turtle, or I'd try to do some sort of big all-in on three or four base. Uh, maybe maybe a very quick all-in at the start of the game. I don't know. Clem's a player who could definitely micro and multitask well enough to cover such a big expanse, but naturally, for me as an old-school Terran player, I do not like having this much room on the map. I like tight spaces where I can siege my units up, entrench them, and then just kind of touch myself casually while the Zerg gets frustrated. On this map, lots of avenues to come in. Lots of paths. Here we go. Big ultra attack coming in. Vipers do cop some EMPs. Nice. Biles takes out one of the Liberators. The Ravager is a kind of peasant answer to the Liberator. But if there's just one or two Liberators, they'll they'll cut it. Once you get to many Liberators, Corrosive Bile sucks. But against just one or two, it's not too bad. The Ultra's there with their movement speed upgrade as well as 3-3. Three, three. Go in, deny the base, then they run away. Up in the top, here comes the attack. But look, Mauling Bane Ultra's ready for it. He's jumping on two sides at once right now. Is Serral. He forces the pick up on the bottom. Clem not watching the top. He loses all of those units. Parasitic bombs and Biles taking out the clumped libs. Oh me, oh my. Those Ravagers going to take out even more libs. If you can overwhelm the ground army, the Liberators are easy pickings. That is not good for Clem right now. Nice Unbar Fungal coming in. Oh, we're starting to go a little bit here as we do have some big late game Zerg versus Terran. A couple of Ravages starting to fall. A round of Corruptors would make a lot of sense. It is very surprising to me that as the Liberator count grows, Serral doesn't just make like 8 to 10 Corruptors. I know they're expensive on the supply, but you've lost your Ravages, you lost the trash units. There we go. Six Corruptors finally building. It's been a while, but 
does end up making that adjustment. That's what's necessary against the Bio Ghost Lib play. Liberator starts to move forward as well. So people are saying, didn't we used to play with those big four player corner maps? Yeah, Frost, Whirlwind, some pretty big maps. Definitely those ones did get hard to cover at times. But this map especially, because your expansions are all in the very edges of the map, it feels like there's so much space between the bases and these big open cavernous fields in the middle. That's why this map feels so, so gigantic. Fungal boy, fungal boy, fungal boy. Watch out for the fungal boy. Watch out for the fungal boy. Oh, pops up, gets a nice fungal. Good Viper Micro to avoid the EMPs that time around. Get some parasitic bombs off. Corruptors aren't here just yet, though. He's going to have to bring those into the fight. You can see they were clearing up the Liberator down the bottom before joining the front. Corruptors do have their own control group, guys. You can see they are there. And they're going to start cleaning up these Liberators. There's a bunch of Libs there out on their own. Clem needs to get them out of here. Oh, man, this is a disaster. Clem's going to lose those three Liberators. The Bio trying to push north into the gold base, but that means he's pushing on creep with only a couple of libs and a pack of Bio mine. The Ultras and the Banes do pretty well in these sort of scenarios. Corruptor is denying that gold base. He should be bringing these Corruptors back, cleaning up so many of these Liberators. Liberator in the south side being a bit of a cheeky D-head. Uh, Ultra Baneling trying to roll in. He's got an Infestor from behind. Nice scan for Clem. Takes out the Infestor. Realizes, uh-oh. If the Zerg runs at me, it almost always means there's an Infestor tracking my army, about to pop up and ruin my day. Great Liberator Harass coming in now. 17 workers do go down. But as the Corruptors come in, the value for Serral is out of this world. Even in the units lost tab, while having a 10,000 resource bank, another Infestor popped up from below and just blasted those units. The Corruptors have been left behind. I wouldn't mind the Corruptors just on the main army key, personally. Serral, though, apparently has decided he wants those as more of a Liberator defense key more than anything else. Ultra Baneling running south, as are some Zerglings. The Widow Mine there will take out a couple of those. Base in the bottom, not going to go down. There's no medevacs here to save these units. There's seven medevacs on the map, but they are not together where they're needed. And you can see, even though he kills a hatchery, Clem is taking catastrophic losses in the process. Serral is rich. Serral is, has not had to tap into his reserves at all. It is all crack soldiers on the front lines. Clem right now is calling up the militia. He has a bunch of bloody dads. Uh, most of his marines and marauders have a bit of a paunch to them. They can't run very far without getting out of breath. And they get scared whenever they see a gigantic 40-foot-tall space cow stampeding down the street towards them. Okay, he's going to push forth, forwards in the north one more time. Fix bayonets and charge! It's a very special Clem maneuver. But charging towards Ultra Bailing on creep, it's not for the faint of heart. It is a very hard thing to pull off. Nice Widowmine gets some Zergans. There's a lot of Ultras, though. If he can't get the snipes, it's hard to kill the Ultras. And he does pop one of them, but one of them does break a few of those snipes. Remember, if you get out of range, then you cannot get punished as hard. Liberator sieging the bottom right side right now. It does deny a queen being a massive bastard. But, oh, Fungal on the Medivax and the Ghost! Oh, that's it. GG, lovely play. The queens are finally going to deal with that Liberator down the bottom as well. Nice transfuses, really well done. And that's going to be GG. Serral dominating on his map pick after Clem wins his own... All right, let's go into the next game. Down here in the bottom right, Clem suffering uh, on that large map. Now he's back on his pick. Oceanborn, pretty good map for Terran. Bit smaller, some lovely ledges to take advantage of, some sight blockers all over the place. Zerg does not like those things. That being said, I don't think it's massively Terran favored. I do think Serral could do some stuff here. And since it's quite wide open on these ramps and a small map, it's not a bad map for some roach aggression. Last time they played, Serral mixed in the two base Roach push with the Queen drop and he absolutely botched it and it looked appallingly bad. I believe it was on this map. Um, I would say do that again, but do it properly this time is, is an option. On the, Of course, Serral does not like to be predictable, so I don't think he'll try it again, but uh, we'll see exactly what he goes for. So far, going up into 16 workers on minerals, rallying the 17th worker onto gas. He then rallies this drone to mine, and he'll send the next drone to the natural, usually. Interesting. He's not sending a, a worker down to the natural. There we go. Now he does. So he mines five minerals, and then he pulls the drone off, and then he puts this guy on gas. Oh, he's going to mine five extra minerals before putting on gas. Serral's attention to detail is next level. Look at that. And he'll tell that guy to return cargo. And then these drones, he just uh, gets two on there, and then he's rallied a third onto gas, but normally he sends this down to the natural expansion. So I think he might change that unless he's going Ling Speed. All right, Serral's playing Ling Speed this game. He's going to be playing Ling's no, uh, no Roaches in the opening stage, at least. 
Reaper's coming forward. Reaper's coming forward right now. Gonna go for some damage. Nice small map, so it gets a few seconds in here uncontested. Not the end of the world. SCV is looking for drones that are hiding right now, by the looks of it. Or is he going proxy stop? Oh, he's doing Hellion drop. Or, wait, wait, wait. No, no, it's a Liberator. Clem's going proxy Liberator. It's his proxy Liberator build. He killed Solar with this the other day. It's a great build order. You just get a Liberator out really early off of a three command center build while running your Hellions around. It's a really cute build. He doesn't have the gas for it just yet. Wait, where's his third command center? Wait, wait, he's gone second gas before third CC. Oh, Clem's build is a disaster, guys. He forgot to take second gas. And now he's forgotten to build a third command center. So he's kind of, he's just doing a really bad double gas build. And his Hellions are building at a decent time, but I think his Medivac's going to be slowing things down a lot. So I think it has to be a Liberator, not, not, not Medivac, but... Definitely an awkward opening for him. Serral, of course, going up to Ling speed. Third queen's out, fourth queen's on the way. Serral doesn't really have any info about what the build is. If you look at his minimap vision, he's got one Overlord on the bottom side. That's it. Cyclones are building as well now, so it's going to be two Hellions, two Cyclones. Wait, what the? There's no way he has enough gas to build Liberators out of this. He just cancelled something that he had spent money on, a tech lab, I guess it was, so he can afford the Liberator, but Clem's build is not lining up. Whoa, that Reaper goes flying! Hey! Does end up bouncing off the camera. My dream is for someone, just one person watching when I get a camera shot like that, to uh, to actually like duck or flinch in their chair right as the thing kind of hits the camera. Someone's out there watching in VR, right? <laughs> Hellion's pumping two at a time. Liberty's going to come down that right side. Sarah does not know about this. Let's see how well he responds. He's got five queens and two more on the way. He's building a roach horn. So even though he opened Ling Speed, he is going to go for roaches for safety in the mid game. I think when he sees the Cyclones, though, I think he should go for just mass Zergling. I think mass Ling is actually way better because you can just surround. He's trying to break the lock on, scare him away. He's going to have to bring pretty much every queen to the front. That means that Liberator slides in the back door. Serral a little slow to respond. Queen moves over, hasn't started the Spore Crawl yet, which is going to make dealing with that a little difficult. Queens do not have a lot of transfuse energy. Liberator, yeah, finally a Spore Crawler goes down. Zergling comes in, gets cleaned up. Extra Barracks going down behind this. Of course, the Starport only builds one Lib and floats home. That's how he always does this. It's uh, definitely been an awkward execution of his early game from Clem. Despite that, he's finding massive lost mining time. He's really slowing Serral's build order down. But he can't be throwing his units away. He's got to be real careful with that. Oh, he resieges very quickly. That's really cute. And he actually gets a drone there. Serral was expecting him to unsiege. There we go. Finally gets to go back to mining. Liberator does go down. Hellion Cyclone gets wrapped around, but I think this is a good fight for Clem. It's not quite enough Hellions to really ruin this. Gets rid of one of the Cyclones, a few of the Hellions, but overall not a terrible fight for Clem. He still has some Hellion Cyclone presence on the map. Starport comes home to build a reactor. Third command center is almost finished. Definitely. An oddball start for Clem. He's thrown his spanner in the work. Serral slowed down from this. Up 12, 13 workers. His lair almost finished. Double Evolution Chamber are both down at the front. Bit of an exposed position for them. I don't know why this placement just looks really funny. I feel like a, qu a queen needs to stand here. Just to complete the pattern. You get like this little queen outpost. Maybe that's where they, they, they can put the little zerglings in there. It's like a little playpen. And then as long as there's a queen in the door, none of them will get out and hurt themselves. Roach speed's on the way. A few roaches. Infestation pit starting on the top right. Serral has not started his 1-1 upgrades. He's got to remember to do that. So Serral, Serral, I think, does a separate evolution chamber hotkey, doesn't he? Uh, no, he actually doesn't use an evo chamber hotkey at all. I, I could have sworn he had it on number 6 or 7. Maybe forgetting to do that is why he's forgot his upgrades. Yeah, yeah, number 6. There we go. So he starts his upgrades, realizes his evos weren't control grouped, and puts them on number 6. Uh, Clem, he's got a lot of marines right now on zero. Now the Cyclone Hellion's on zero. Lots of barracks, factories, starports. Double engineering bay's pumping away. Remember, he likes to go second factory next, along with one or two gases, and then armory. So there we go. Fifth gas, factory. Tells us it's probably a Widow Mine style. Uh-oh. Ling's coming in. I like the split on the Zerglings. Trying to slow down the pressure. 
But because he's being distracted right now, Clem may forget Armory. Normally he builds that right after that step, but he just got distracted by Serral. Serral's making 23 roaches. Serral could just try to kill him with a 1-1 one -one timing this game. Armory goes down. Clem is on point today. Clem is not sleeping, man. Losing a game on Radhuset Station really does not speak poorly of Clem's form going into this. Yes, his opening was a little sloppy at the start of this game. Yes, his supply is way down, but it's against Roach Ravager. The only thing is, I don't know if he's seen the Mass Roach Ravager yet. He needs to know. Okay, those Marines start overpowering the Queens. They force a few Roaches to show themselves. The Roaches are already on their way across the map. I don't think Clem realizes. He goes home and starts a second armory. He has no siege tanks on the way. He's only now swapping his factory to build a tech up. He's going to drop. He has no idea that these Roaches are coming in. Oh, Clem is just going to get absolutely hammered. The goal to be picking up to try to continue dropping that. He really did not realize what sort of position he was in. Those SCVs need to run to the bottom corner of the map or something. They need to try and get out of there. He's going to have to pull back to his main base ramp. But Clem is just completely blindsided and a massive maxed out 1-1 roach timing at 8 minutes. Gets an easy victory. Serral up 3-1. to one. It's not over till it's over. This young man will keep fighting until the hour becomes dark. It is Clem in the bottom right side representing Team Liquid. But it's a rough way to lose a game. He was on autopilot. He was not expecting the roach play. Serral hit it very well and got himself an easy victory. And he did it on Clem's map. And that is a disaster because now Clem has to play Golden Aura. And yes, the maps are becoming a bit more palatable to Terran, but I do still feel Golden Aura is one of the better Zerg maps in the pool because you've got these big wide open areas where you can swarm on top of a Terran. And whilst there are nice choke points around the bases to either defend or you can leverage them in an attack, it's uh, another map where getting a really good tank push across the map is difficult. I think on this side, you got a good tank push on that base. But on the other side, uh, you know, it's big wide open areas. Hard to really force your will on the Zerg player. Clem is going to go for the SCV scout. He's been doing that a lot. Not really cutting many corners in this series. A sneaky dot enters the room. Spawning pool's almost finished. Drones are pumping up right now. Gas is, uh... Is not going down yet. And that is... Is he doing... Wait, 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 guys, what is Cyril doing? And why is he... Is he going to try and squeeze a quick third out? He is. SCV sees it. I'm not watching, though. Clem is not watching. Is he going to let that third hatchery get up? No way. Cyril changes his mind and goes back. His overlord did get started a little late. There we go. Starts a few more drones he needs. So he's going to go two queens and then another overlord. I think he might do a six queen opening. So there we go. Third and fourth queen into the Overlord should be starting right now for Serral. It's just waiting for the Lava to pop out. Lava pops out, and the Lava turns into an Overlord. Dude, he has these openings so well. So well refined. Third command center goes down for Clem. Notice once again, Clem's taking the gas on the wrong side. That one does give away scouting. Of course, his third command center is so exposed, he doesn't really care about hiding it anyway. Alright, Reaper's going to rotate here. Not really seeing too much. Seven drones on the way, an incredibly late gas. Serral's basically banking on getting away with murder. If you're very much a rookie to StarCraft, how do I explain what Serral's doing? Okay. So Serral's basically entering a fight, and what his opponent, he's hoping his opponent doesn't realize that he doesn't have fists for the first five minutes of the fight. Because if Clem realizes, hey, you don't have link speed, you don't have roaches, you didn't have gas, you can't have anything other than queens. He could dive in with Hellions and do big damage. He could, you know, really uh, yolo on the aggression, or he could go super greedy, one or the other. But I don't think Clem realizes, because he never went in the main. The third base went down at a pretty normal time, so I think Serral's done a great job of pretending this is a normal build. And once roaches are out, it doesn't matter that your gas is so late. You get a few roaches out, they can help defend with the queens, that'll shut down Hellions. It's only a four-queen opening here for Serral. He doesn't have that many queens, but look. Roach Warren's done, he should be putting roaches momentarily. Banshees and Cloak on the way for Clem. Clem's going to be annoyed looking at this uh, replay of this game later. I love the way Serral plays versus Clem. It feels like Serral never plays straight up versus Clem. The old days, it felt like every time Serral played, it was the most straight up solid standard stuff you could do. These days, he's like, I am going to be really greedy. Okay, I'm going to be really all in with Roaches in, in the previous game. 
And then when you're maybe a bit paranoid about it, I'm going to go really greedy. And it's, it's just such a great way to play StarCraft. And look, he might even be able to fake aggression with this. Clem's like, oh, is he coming? Is he coming? Oh, God. So Clem's like even slightly worried there, but he's got Banshees, so he should be fine. Second and third barracks goes down. Third and fourth gas, then double engineering bay will be the play. If you don't go cloaked Banshees, you can get the engineering bays a little bit earlier because he spends so much gas on those Banshees. You want to start stim and upgrades at the same time, you'll be broke. So third and fourth gas goes down. And those engineering bays will be the last little cherry on top of the pie. Lair almost finished. The third base oversaturated on drones. Perfectly. Perfectly done here. Because as he wants to peel all these workers off to mine gas, you want to have an excess. You don't really want to ever dip under your maximum mineral income. And Cyril is doing that splendidly. Banshee on the bottom left right now. Looking to scout wherever that fourth base goes down. Double eBay for Clem is up. He's got already the swap around on the add-ons. He's going to build tanks for safety this time around. And of course, he's seen roaches, so it makes perfect sense to do that. Third command center floating out as well. The double evolution chamber is slightly behind for Cyril, but Clem hasn't actually found the money to start those upgrades just yet. He'll be able to soon. All right, trading alien for a roach. No, alien's all actually surviving there. Well done. And Cyril's going to expand to the left side. I like this. Generally, when you play Roach play, you have very poor anti-air control. If you drop here, they can, you know, if, if you take this base, they drop here, you run to it, they pick up drop in the high ground, and it's very hard to get around this corner. But if you expand in a straight line along the edge of the map, it's a bit easier to zone out these edges with spore crawlers and to not take quite so much damage. Good harassment by Clem comes in, gets three more drones. Units lost tabs looking decent for him. Of course, not many trades going on, but he's at least... I was about to say he's at least slowing down Serral, and then I glanced down at the worker tab. When did that happen? There's already a hive on the way and 83 drones. Clem's running in, though. Clem's running in. Serral caught off guard. The Banshees in the main distracted him, and the Roaches ran straight past those Hellions, or at least one or two rallying out did. Does get 11 workers. Not a bad trade for those Hellions. The Banshees do both survive. Great play by Clem to survive and, and kind of keep them up for later because they can get insane value. Ling Speed and a Hydroden. Hydroden tells us he's planning to go Lurkers. Sarah wants to go for a, a big Viper Lurker push. Blinding Clouds or Abducts on Siege Tanks. Lurkers shoving forward. It's a great way to hit a timing attack. Lurkers suck later on when your opponent has Heavy Tank Ghost. But there is no way Clem is at that stage. He's only just got his second factory on the way. He doesn't have a fourth command center. He doesn't even have an armory right now, guys. And he's 1-1. One, one. Oh my god, his plus one attack is so late. I didn't even realize that. Look at how far behind he is. A minute behind on his plus one attack. Uh-oh. That's not good for Clem. Does start a fourth command center right now in his natural. But several, dude. He's mining like mad. Feels like Clem is such a good standard player. And, and, and several has done so much in the last year to befuddle Clem. He's killed him with surprise roach attacks. Surprise mutilisk rushes. Nida swarms. Burrowed Roach tactics he was ruining Clem with for a while. This game he plays super greedy into Hive and Lurker Viper. It's the mix-ups that make it so difficult. Clem cannot get into his element. Serral always has him guessing. He's one step ahead, and this is why Serral is the greatest player of all time. It's because he's still winning world championships. He's still winning big tournaments four, five, six years after he first really came into prominence. And that is what makes him so bloody scary because he may not be as good in the straight up standard, you know, untouchable state that he was in 2018, but it doesn't matter because strategically his planning, his preparation and his ability to counter his opponent's style, take away their momentum is next level. I always feel like a lot of players in StarCraft are like Clem. If they get going, they look unstoppable. But Serral's a master of taking the wind out of your sails. He never lets you into that element, into that position where you play so well. And right now, yes, Clem's starting to get little bits of value, but I mean, it's an even units lost tab. That's not great for Terran. He's stuck turtling. He's got a fourth base going out, but he's going to have to play late game versus Serral, and that is rough. Plus two armor starts. He needs to remember to start plus two attack, but because it was so far behind, he only started one upgrade. And the longer that goes, the worse this gets. There we go. He does realize good fix there for Clem. Vehicle weapon upgrades as well. You love to see it. If he can get out a ghost or two, that would be incredible because I feel he's, he's gotten next level at EMPing the Vipers on the way in. If you can do that, your siege tanks will keep you very safe in this game. And he's got tank coverage here in a very central location. Roaches could run south, but it would be a one-way trip. Roaches are going to run in and get hammered. A very dicey maneuver for Serral. Oh my lord. 
20 roaches for a marauder and a siege sack. That's what I would call a questionable trade from even trading to ouch. But he wants zerglings, he wants lurkers, he wants vipers. He's also going to go for a big doom drop into the main. Sorrel, I feel like could have just hit a frontal timing using those roaches as part of his army. I don't see why he needed to throw those roaches away separately. Oh, Clem's going to scout this. Clem is about to scout this army. He hides the drops. Good job of Serral. He pulled the drops back. But now it's impossible to get that drop into the main base. Because the marines are out here kind of posturing. He's going to start to unsiege and bring tanks forward in the near future as well. More command centers are building right now for Clem. He's trying to get orbitals. He's trying to roam the map with marines while staying super turtled and safe at home with his rally. Problem is that's a big drop. One, two, three, four, five. Five lurkers and about 40 zerglings. If that gets in your main base, it'll tear it up. And yet, oh my god, he's ready. He's ready. He knows that when Cyril plays lurkers, he likes to do drops. Oh, watch out for the parasitic bomb though. Oh, blinding cloud. Not what I was expecting. Abduct is one of the best moves when they load up into those medevacs, but these hydras don't have the range upgrade just yet. Cyril forgot the Hydra upgrade for Groove Spines completely the last time he played Clem. This might be a bad habit that's starting to form in Cyril's play, where he just forgets about the range upgrade every game. Parasitic Bombs would be a good idea, but oh, Cyril not watching! He also doesn't. He's got Adaptive Talons, but it did get nerfed recently. Still not using those Vipers. He's waiting for the Siege Tanks. Here we go. He's going to get a drop inside the main, but these Overlords are all going to die. This is a very costly endeavor. We'll get rid of at least one of the command centers on the high ground. He's going to push the front at the same time. A couple of abducts on those tanks could be nice. Gets rid of one of them. Up in the main base, though, these tanks, marauders, and ghosts should be able to take out those lurkers. Lurkers kill a command center. They kill a few building barracks in production. Units lost tab, though, tells a story, and that is Clem locking things down. I told you guys lurkers are very good for fierce timing attacks, and they aren't good when your opponent gets to a lot of tanks and ghosts. Well, guess what? There's seven tanks, eight tanks, six ghosts, Clem may have lost a bit of units here. I think overall he's coming out on top. And I think as Serral, you need to be pivoting into Broodlord play. You cannot stay on Lurkers. He's finally remembering Groove Spines. He's got a Baneling Nest. Ling Bane, Hydra, Viper. It's not a bad composition. But if you let your Terran opponent get this set up, it's going to be tough to break him. We've already got three Orbitals up with many more commands in his finishing. Banshee's breaking these Lurkers out and freeing himself from the contain. Nidus Worm's on the way. Cyril's had a big economy. He can afford to take some bad trades like this and still be in a position where he could swipe in and kill the Terran. Because remember, he killed a few command centers that were under construction. They don't show up here. This one is not continuing building. Clem's microing Banshees right now. He really needs to tend to that macro. His 3-3 is on the way, but later than plus three carapace for Cyril. His command center is still not building. He's finally got one more orbital up, but four or five orbitals, it's better. It's still not amazing. And he's got to be careful about that orbital placement because his tanks cannot really move through these choke points so well. Still no Spire on the horizon for Serral. When you go Lurkers, one of the main advantages is it kind of funnels Terran into playing heavy tank Ghosts. And whilst Ghosts can kind of counter Broodlords, if you add Infestors, you will be able to deal with it. And there we go. Spire and the Infestor upgrades coming in. That's what I like to see. Serral will prepare for that endgame scenario. Clem's going to have plenty of opportunities, though. I, I think the advantage from the early game for Serral has mostly dissipated. Clem's very well set up on five bases. And now it's going to become about trading. Can Clem keep securing one new base at a time and weather the storm? Serral, can he mine out these corner bases and steal the resources before Clem even gets a chance to mine? Because right now, you can tell Serral's not trying to kill him. He should transfer workers from these bases to the corners top right and bottom left and mine those as much as he can he's on 94 workers is several not gonna have enough army supply to break into a defensive position not with that many workers queens you've got 14 supply in queens you've got a roach a few spellcasters that don't do raw damage themselves as well Baneling Speed not quite ready. That's an ugly army right now. Baneling Speed finally kicks in. That army looks a little bit more competent, but if you attack down this ramp, you're actually a psycho. Serral, keep it in your pants. I think he's just trying to basically keep mining up on this bottom left base. And it is fully mining, and he's transferred drones to the top right, so he's doing indirect damage to Clem right now. Clem's having to invest thousands of more resources in orbital commands, infrastructure, planetaries. And if you're stealing resources from his side of the map, he simply won't be able to beat you, even if he trades better. Right now it is 2-1 in favor of Clem for that trading. Widowmine lands on a few Zerglings. 
He needs Infestors to try and catch these units as they come forward, and he needs the Broodlord swap. Greatest Buyer halfway done. Lurkers in the top. Oh, no, Clem! Well, Clem's double Marine drop turns into four dead Marines, uh, six, 12 dead Marines, four that barely survive. He's going to send a bunch of ghosts up there. Six ghosts and a few more Marines has to lift the command center temporarily. You do get into a problem past this sixth base. This sixth base alone sticks out a lot. Seventh base there and up there, though, are super exposed. And that's why I really want to see Cheryl mine those out, man. Because Clem, I mean, if he only gets to mine six bases and you get to mine, like, nine, that is automatically game over. Lurkers get taken out in the top. Those overlords do pull back. Cheryl's going to rotate a bunch of his mobile Lingbane Hydra. Leaves a small squad in the bottom. And you know Clem realizes, hey, you're going to send units top. I'm going to take advantage. He's going to start poking in, looking for weakness. Going to start inching these tanks and liberators forward. Nicely done. Oh, the fungal barely gets dodged by the hot pickup. Only a single ghost gets left behind. Clem's tank on the high ground really making a very good account of herself. That is Sergeant Shadhammer if I've ever seen it. God, she's killing some stuff. Nice. Ghosts in the bottom do snipe down the lurker. One ghost does go down, though. These trades aren't completely amazing for Clem. They're, they're positive, massively positive even. But as long as Cyril's mining these bases out, you're in trouble. There we go. Getting it and denying some of this gold mining would be massive. Really good pressure. The top base still only has seven workers on minerals. He's mining out the gas. But you never really know what's going to run short first, minerals or gas. Usually it's minerals for Terran. Bailings do come in. Big Ling flank from the north. Here we go. A couple of tanks get surrounded. The ghosts do put up a very good fight with those medevacs, but there's Bailings behind it. Great hot pickup. Really got a get a good hot pickup there for Clem. A few of the Hydras do try to rally through those units. They get hammered. There is still no plus three melee for Serral. Surprisingly, though, is there's no Spire? Uh, corruptors. There's no Broodlords? I mean, there is seven tanks, and he's building more of them right now. That's seven after you killed, like, four or five tanks in that last battle. Clem's denying the gold base, the top right base. Like I said, man, if he had 16 workers there, that's putting even more pressure on Clem. Serral, he's trading down 8,000 resources. At least it's no longer 2 to 1 in Clem's favor. Festers are being built. Air weapons are on the way. He wants to start getting some more of those upgrades. The upgrade tab's reasonably full for both sides. No medevac energy upgrades just yet. Ghost picking off a few drones and creep tumors down there. Scans do see the greater spire. No, he doesn't. Greater spire is behind the third, so he doesn't actually see the spire. Clem does not know that Serral has that tech available. He hasn't built a single Thor. He's got no Vikings. Liberator's getting abducted into Hydra's always a great move. There is an Infestor coming in from behind as well. He's going to jump on top of this army. There's not a lot of units here. An SCV rally was in the midst of this. They're trying to pull back. Nice. Fungal catches a few of the ghosts. A lot of the Lingbane all stuck on a single ghost on the ramp. He did not want to run down that ramp as Serral. He does go to the bottom left. Takes out that siege tank there as well. It's a 31 kill siege tank. Chadham is still up here with 29 kills covering this area. Serral's done a great job of denying this base though. And he is mining now with full 16 workers in the top right. Which is massive. Clem's getting a big bang for himself. He's slowing things down successfully. If Clem can take down Serral in a game like this, it is a massive confidence booster. Serral got away with massive greed in the early game. He's one game away from sealing the deal. He's still got a gigantic 13,000 bank versus a 6,000 bank. Having six, 7,000 more resources in that bank is big. Zerg has big production. You know, they can reproduce very quickly. He's got 60 lava right now, and that's after building 56 Zerglings. Serral's injects his creep spread, all that stuff's great. He's going to try and steal more of Clem's resources on the right side. I love that idea. Ducting the siege tank, nicely done. Marines derping down a little bit. Sniping those Hydras would be nice. Those Hydras were all stuck behind each other. They finally free themselves from the trap. Caduceus Reactor, that is 100% energy regen rate for the Metavacs coming up, plus two vehicle weapons as well. Plus three melee finally starting for Serral, realizing he's forgetting that upgrade. Ghost Tank's going to start to push in on this base. I mean, if Clem can deny this base and, and these minerals, he could take this later. Using that right side base, not great, but look at this. Serral's going to come in. Chadhammer's on her own. She has another tank on the right side, but Chadhammer's going to die real quick. The tank on the right will go down. The bunker has no units in it. This base is going to have to get evacuated. The SCVs, well, they get evacuated from live. Serral's nice enough to do that for him. The orbitals lift off. The Liberators do defend. On that left side, the Ghost run in, kill a few drones, but... He's going to pick up, get out. 
Nice hot pickup. Tanks and libs are going to make this a kind of awkward trade, but well done there. Bicero gets a few tanks for Zerglings, pulls back. Units lost tab. 11,000 resources in favor of Clem. But now that Serral has this base, you know he's going to send workers there if he gets a chance. But Clem is aware of it, and he's like, wait, wait, wait. There is no way I'm going to let you mine from that. No effing way, mate. Get out of here, you dirty Zerg player. Kill the Xenos, man. Ultra Cabin's almost finished. Oh, my. Things on that right side rotating around. Bio getting cleaned up as well. We've got Ghosts, Tanks, Liberators all hanging out on this left side. That's a beautiful position for Clem. Clem is playing the super long efficiency game. As long as he keeps the game slow and Serral doesn't make Broodlords, he is winning the game. And, and I really did not think we'd see this. Serral just is not wanting to make those Broods. Even losing a Ghost there, well worth it. You know these trades are amazing for him, man. 13,000 resource lead in the units lost for Clem. And every time Serral takes a Hatchery, that's 300 minerals as well. That does add up. Top right base, of course, mining as well as it is, is nice for Serral. Clem has the bottom left. He's going to mine out the rest of those gold minerals. His bank is getting massive as well. And Serral, you just... This is not an efficient trading army for Serral. He strategically... If, he, if you want to play this army, guys, you have to break the Terran positions. He needs to come in from all sides, break this, deny the bottom left. He's going to go for it now. There we go. And not a second too, too late. He's got to go right now and break this position. Not really landing any blinding clouds or anything on those tanks. He does break through the front line. Gets rid of an orbital, which is actually lovely for him in the top right side as well. Looks like he defended a triple drop up there. That was actually a really good series of engagements. It's when you break through the front line, that's where you find the efficiency. Back to 10,000 resources lost difference, which is way better. Serral traded 3,000 resources better in the last minute of this game. That is a massive series of engagements for him. Clem cannot be trading worse than the Zerg player. Oh man, you got to repair, you got to mass repair. He does have building armor and that five armor plating on that planetary he says, get out of here, you stupid Zerglings. Nice play for Clem. He's going to build a second planetary in front of that one to try to cement this position. He's also dropping mules on the right side. There is a creepy infester watching him. It's the only infester on the map. Two more on the way. Anabolic synthesis coming in. Serral's thinking about remaxing on ultras. It is one of the easiest ways to remax quickly if your opponent doesn't have too many ghosts. Here we go. Giant attack on the north coming in. It's a lot of tanks and liberators. Not much else, though. So the Zerglings do get on top reasonably quickly. Oh, me, oh, my. Those blinding clouds are big, but there's not enough to deal with the liberators. The, the, the Hydras get smashed. The Siege Tank's taking big damage. That tank is still in the rear with the gear. Does survive in the back line. Only seven SCVs went down. Units lost tab. 12,000 resource difference. So it just went 2,000 resources back in favor of Clem, that one. He needs to collapse back on the bottom left and kill that base. Serral, if he's going to keep playing this army, he needs to go pig-headed and just YOLO. But he's building Corruptors and Ultras, which... Wait, why is he going Corruptors and Ultras? Oh, he's not playing Broodlords! He's just building the Corruptors to deal with the, the Liberators. That is exactly what he needs to do. If he's going to stay on this ground-pounding army, Corruptors are amazing versus the Libs. A couple Ultras I don't mind. You don't want too many because Snipe does counter them, but a couple of Ultras can be fantastic. Liberators doing really nicely. The Ling Bane's going to chase back the ground army, but he's got nothing to deal with the air right now. Fungal from below does get a few decent Fungals, but it's a costly trade. The Liberators and the spread from Clem. This is costing several thousands of resources. I don't know if this is worth it. This is a very expensive trade, but the Corruptors do come in from behind. They start to get some value. You've got to pull back as before the Ghosts get here, though. Well, he gets another Liberator. The Ghost doesn't even land any Snipes. Not too bad, actually. Serral, man. Down only 9,000 resources in the units lost. That was a really good fight. He's got Ultras coming in now as well as more Lings and more Banes. Clem may need to chill for a moment here. These Libs are getting effectively countered. If you don't have the Corruptors, the Libs reign supreme. Once the Corruptors are out, though, they start to lower that number steadily. They might not have the craziest damage output, but the Corruptors will steadily kill those Libs, and that is very, very important. The Ling Ultra trying to overwhelm on the ground. Several looking for the momentum win. Clem's actually out of gas right now. This might be the breaking maneuver. He's actually broken him. Clem can only build Marines. He's out of gas. He's going to lose this command center. Serral still has 9,000 resources in the bank. All that earlier mining he took out of the corner base is adding up. And Clem does not have a lot of gas right now. The Corruptors 
a genius moment to build those corruptors to deal with the liberator Serral, the way he attacked the bottom left broke that position and then rotated his whole army to the top right the first fight didn't look that good but it's the second fight that breaks through ling bane styles are not directly efficient but once they break the front line it is hard for the terran to be ready for the next wave because it takes forever to rebuild planetaries and and liberators and tanks and get these units in position whereas the zerg with his creep highway just advances across the map and swarms over you He's even going to build a hatchery in his face. That is the middle finger if I've ever seen one. That man is building a frigging hatchery in your face. Clem is like, oh, come on, man. That's just rude. I thought we were friends. Several cancers it at the 11th hour. Comes down to the bottom left, unzips his fly, and says, it's a cold finish winter, and nothing warms us up. Like getting a little bit of that, that, that vodka in us and then publicly urinating. Goes down there, pees on the command centers in the bottom left side. The Ultra Baneling does get defended on the bottom side, but he forces the lift. He pees down both planetaries in the bottom left side, and that is devastating damage. Finishing it in style there, a little bit of that vodka to warm up your uh, your blood. And to, you know, make you a little bit less risk averse. Nothing like going and peeing on your opponent's base. Drones trying to even long distance mine. Several still got 9,000 resources, 10,000 resources in the bank. And he's maxed against the 157 supply terror. And the army supply may be even, but Clem needs to find a way to stall this out. And that means he needs he needs buildings. He needs to choke this up, but he just doesn't have it. He scans. He's coming forward. His ghost's a bit clumped. A bit of a dangerous maneuver there. Drones are going to try and long distance mine the remaining minerals from the bottom left side of the map. Serral realizing the map is mostly mined out. Here we go. Serral going in. He wants to finish the game right here, right now. The Corruptor Viper annihilating the Vikings. The Infestors getting MP'd. A few blinding clouds do land. The Ultra Ling Bane rolling over the top. Remember, the Corruptors are killing all of the Medivacs and Liberators at the same time. Clem crushes part of the ground battle. He kills a ton of Ultras, but what's his air count? He's got one Medivac, one Liberator. There's nothing here to heal this army. Those Corruptors are what keeps getting the value for Serral, and this is why things are so bad for Clem. He's down 8,000, only ahead, sorry, 8,000 in the resources lost, which is obviously a big swing. So Serral has been trading actually over the course of the last 15 minutes better than Clem on average. And that goes to show the mastery of Serral. His ability to pick engagements, you are meant to trade a lot better than the Zerg. When you're playing Serral, he often puts paid to that preconception. And there's always moments where he sits there and you go, man, he's not attacking, he needs to attack. And then he just finds that perfect engagement. He waits for it. His patience is king. The SCV is getting taken down there. The Ling's breaching the mineral line. Mass ultra charge. Banelings rolling through. Snipes popping these ultra lists. But there is just so many units. Nice snipes on the Corruptors as well. But the command center is burning. And how can you sleep while the command center is burning? That's what they always say. Well, it's going to burn down. And Clem is going to have to tap out in a moment. He's trying to float another orbital down. But of course, this is his hopes and dreams right now. This is the finals of Europe. Wow, Serral is such a tricky boy, man. He is so clever with the adjustments to his builds. He looks to be very greedy at the right times, very aggressive at the right times. And he does not let Clem play standard StarCraft. I guarantee you, if Serral plays a predictable standard style of StarCraft, Clem may be one of the most god-tier gamers of all time. But Serral pops up from behind, lands yet another fungal on those ghosts. The Ultraling Bane cracks the front line. Another Infester coming in from behind, only clipping the edge of those ghosts but still very successful. Clem has to tap out. Serral ends up triumphing today and becoming the EU Regionals champion with a dominant performance in the finals. He wins three maps, only loses one. Of course, he started up 1-0 because he'd already not lost a series in the entire tournament. He 3 0 a few of the other top players as well leading into this. And just a dominant and amazing display of Serral continuing his legacy as the most consistent player over the last five years of StarCraft.